What's up with it, y'all? It's EJO E Business. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. So right here, we're doing something different. Uh, this is like the third time I did like kind of like a documentary, just learning about some stuff. Um, there was a documentary I found. It was on South Africa. I really wanted to do it but it's kind of long. It's like 30 minutes long. So I don't want to make a video that long. It'll end up being like, what, like probably like 40 minutes. And I'm sure I don't want to make something that long where like people aren't going to really watch it, you know? But I'm doing this right here. It's a learning experience. And this looks really interesting. I, I was looking for something to do and I ended up seeing this and I just want to see how it is, man. Hopefully, you know, you guys might want to watch it all. You know, it's not long. So, you know, it's a white, a white only section in um, South Africa. All right. And I see this is from France. I guess they did like a little story out there from France. All right, let's go. All right. Now time for focus, and it is um, 27 years since the abolition of apartheid in South Africa. And yet even today, there still exist communities of whites who refuse to mix with blacks. It is the case in the small city of Orania. There, the only language spoken is Afrikaans, the tongue of the first Dutch settlers. In Oriana's schools, students have taught a uh, revisited version of history. And while many residents settled here to avoid any sort of ethnic diversity, while others appear to have fled the violence and new racial tensions of present-day South Africa. An air of nostalgia looms over this small town of central South Africa. Here, most residents are Christian and everyone speaks Afrikaans. Today, 1,500 people live in this Afrikaner-only town. It even has its own currency and its own flag. Founded after the collapse of apartheid 27 years ago, figureheads of the racist regime are part of Aranya's scenery. Orania, Afrikaner settlement where we can create our own future, be self-sufficient. And now in the news of Africa, uh, we have a black majority that's also not, not always very kind to the, to the Afrikaners, especially. So um, the, the idea was to, to have a place where we stay out of this. An enclave for Afrikaners, the descendants of Dutch settlers. Farmer Anton Enslin moved to Orania five years ago and says he was evicted from his previous home. When his land was claimed by black South Africans, he accepted compensation from the government. As soon as the land claim was published, the intimidation started. My father gave me the advice and said, Anton, let us sell the farm because we have to let go some of the land. We can't keep the whole South Africa for us. But now, all of us here is feeling safe, we are happy. Anton might be happy, but he isn't reassured. He's concerned that he could be evicted again. The government plans to accelerate redistribution of land to black South Africans by expropriating white farmers. This time, there will be no compensation. Oranya's residents are fearful their heritage could slowly disappear. In this school, the students have two different syllabuses, the state's official programme and Aranya's version. It is uh, geography and history in one book from the viewpoint of the new regime, which is also subjective. This is more from our view viewpoint, so they can compare the two and they can make their own opinion. The town syllabus makes no mention of Nelson Mandela, who they say isn't part of their history. A stronghold for Africana culture. A group of workers who stopped by at this supermarket saw the town for the first time. I think it's not a problem they are living alone, but we also feel like we have to live with them because we are all, all human beings. No, it's actually sad for me to see a place like this. It's very small and live alone. 
So is this the refuge for nostalgics of apartheid or the reflection of an unease among certain Afrikaners today? This couple is considering moving here and the town is providing them with a house for a week before they take a final decision. The local council has offered to assist Leonardo with setting up his electrical company. He says that the laws aiming to increase black employment have turned against white South Africans. Where I'm staying is, you know, to get work is so hard. And I think that's mainly because of my skin colour. It's getting worse and worse. I mean, like 15 mm. years back, I went to the shop, I walked, I did what I want. Now I don't go alone anymore. Last year, there were 57 murders in South Africa every day, a number that has been on the rise for the past six years. And meanwhile, Oranya's population grew by 10%. Wow, this is crazy. Check this out. Stuart, we're going to have more news after the break. Plus, what you and Doug were speaking about that Francophonie summit in Armenia in attendance. Okay. All right, so here, check this out. Um, so look, at, there's history out here in America that um, they've swept under the history books. Like there's a place in um, Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right, this was back, I think in 19, it was either, I think it was 1920 or 21. I don't know, but um, there was obviously, you know, it was very racist out here in America and especially in the South. So in Oklahoma, this is something that I wish people knew about, but <clears throat> excuse me now they're putting it in the history book so check this out man i, I hope people are still uh, listening to this so what they're saying it just reminded me of something out in tulsa oklahoma back then it was over 100 years ago they had a certain section where it was just all black people where they had their own businesses everything that was similar to this right here for the white people but it was the exact same thing but it's for black people but they ended up getting burnt down and it was there was um, a black kid um he went he went into town where the white people are and what said was he was on an elevator and he was on there with a white girl as soon as they got to the building right when they got off she screamed and said how he touched her all right so he ended up running he left the people from the town ended up finding out where the hell he was all the white people from there went to that side of the town where there was a lot of black people and burnt that shit down tore it tore it down to pieces all right nobody knew about that it's in order for people to have found out about that was to look it up or to find it on tv which they never taught anybody i hope people are still watching this all right and um that's been a very, very, that was a huge problem right there with learning that. And what I heard, I heard they're going to start putting that in the history books. That reminds me of um, what I was just seeing right there, how they just have like an area where it's just none but white people and how they're just trying to get away from black people. That reminds me of the whole thing. And it's just seeing that right there compared it. You guys do not understand because how in Africa, the population is African. You know, there's people dark like me, you know? Um, I heard people in Africa, they don't even like being called black whenever they come over here. Um, they just want to be called African. So like seeing stuff like this, what I just saw, you, you can never imagine that out here in America. That shit you see with white people still nowadays. Like they have just an area where it's just none but white people. But why? Is because it's more expensive. You know, so a lot of people with um, a lot of black and brown people, even Asians, um, Native Americans, the main people from America, all right? They're the main people, all right, that discovered America. You know, all the white people, 
from um from Europe that ended up grabbing um that ended up grabbing people from Africa and turned us into slaves out here. A lot of white people they would do when I was younger, they used to do that shit like, hey, go back to your own country, go back to Africa. When they basically made it sound like, oh, we're white, so we're from here. No, nigga, y'all from Europe. The only people whose spot this is is Native Americans, all right? Um, so what I just saw right there is very interesting. And honestly, I really wanted to laugh. I, I really wanted to laugh because just to see something like that. And then in Africa at that, I would have never thought I would have seen something like that, you know? And, um, never. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, let me know if you guys want me to do it. Well, I know people want me to do some more, so I'm going to find some stuff to do. And, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I hope you guys like, I hope you guys are able to watch all of this to what I'm saying too, because how I just try to give you guys just like a quick, quick, quick history lesson on that. Because what I said about how they had that section over a hundred years in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where it was just, it was just a town, basically a certain side, just black people, shit got burnt down. It got tore up. All white people just burnt it up, just tore it to pieces, you know, and it's, never in the history books people found out about it slowly all right thank you for coming y'all i'm gonna do some more soon all right thank you for coming all right we about here